Because if I mess that up, this entire project is just trashed. What is up my party people? Today we are going to be building two variations of these pin holders. The first one, which is for my boss's boss's boss, it has a spot for some business cards and two pin holders. The other one, which is for my wife, has a spot for pins, markers, whatever fits her fancy, and a horizontal pin spot. I don't have AC in my shop and it is a scorcher out. All the fans are off so I can talk to you. So we are going to jump right into it. I start out with a few different sizes. I only wanted the business cards to occupy about half the block, and the block needed to be tall enough for the pin. Cut out the design, and oh beautiful, full spacious skies. I have this solid oak stair tread that I'm going to use because it's about an inch thick. Then I went ahead and picked up a piece of poplar and another piece of that red oak, and I'm just going to layer them like so, and then mirror this onto the bottom to give it a little bit of thickness. I set the table saw to 4 inches. Since the boards will shift and slide around during glue up, I left about a half inch of oopsie room to trim off later. Set the table saw blade to an eighth inch over the material height. Rip down all the lumber to size, and again, I'm leaving a little bit of oopsie room. I mentioned that this is an oak stair tread. At the big box stores, they usually have oak and pine stair treads that are 1 inch thick, and they are relatively inexpensive compared to the other 3 quarters dimensional lumber. This piece started out as a 12 by 48 inch chunk for only 25 bucks where I live. I cut the boards down to about 9 inches on the miter saw, using my first cut as a guide for the rest. So I got my clamps, I got a little bit of salt, and then I got some sacrificial boards. So that way I can clamp them down and it won't affect and I don't have to try and sand out clamp spots. Ooh, look at this. Something I've never used. Uh, a glue brush. All right, so the surface is ready to go. Oh, man. Oh, okay. She does not have a safety seal on her. She just doesn't squirt out. Why doesn't that score it out? Uh oh. Here we go again. I haven't even used it. She's clogged up. All right, forget everything I've said about that glue. We are going to use a tight bond too, because it's ready to go. Apply a generous amount of wood glue to the boards, spread it around to cover the entire board surface. This is called glue surface. And the more of it you have, covered in glue of course, the stronger your bond will be. Oh, oh, the most cool thing. Guys, watch this. You take a little salt, sprinkle them in there, and the granules will actually keep it from sliding around. That's fun. Clamp your boards together. Harbor Freight is the best place to find cheap clamps, like these, which will get you by just fine. I developed a habit of alternating my direction of my clamps. If all of them had the handle on the same side, it would be hard to turn, but also because unlike parallel bar clamps, there is a slight directional force being applied downward. A little bit of glue is squirting out right there. Not too bad. That one is a rete. On to the next. Rinse and repeat for the next pin holder. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to see any brand battles or jabs about why you would want to make a low shaped pin holder. If that is a concern, just skip past this part when I cut out the shape. What? Oh. I wasn't supposed to glue this one, guys. Luckily, this didn't touch, I guess. 
Woo! Again, if you plan your projects, this wouldn't happen to you. I really don't know how that board levitated and had less than a pea-sized drop of glue on it. It was probably the salt. Throw some clamps on it, and one more clamping life hack. If you put a small piece of tape over the top of the bar, it won't get covered in glue. Most of the time, you can just pick the glue spots off once the glue has dried, but save yourself some time. Another thing I didn't do was put down a trash bag or something so the glue drips onto it instead of your workbench. Not a bad idea to do that as well. Remember all those clamps we tightened down? Well, it's time to remove them. All in all, got two blocks of wood glued up now. This morning, I also did make Mach 1 of my push stick. This is the push stick I actually like to use. I don't like using these push sticks because when I'm pushing stuff through, I feel like it's unreliable. This one, you actually have down pressure to push down and hold the front down so it doesn't want to kick up from the saw. So this is my favorite type of a push stick. Again, I didn't like these holes. They look childish. It doesn't matter. I set the table saw to take almost an entire blade's width off to start flattening one of the sides, taking a few passes to achieve my goal. The bigger pin holder, I set the saw height to a little over half the thickness since three inches is a lot for my portable saw to do all at once. And again, multiple passes on both sides, bumping the fence to remove the face of my board. Now that we have a flat side to work with, use the miter saw to flatten the shorter sides. I only made one side of the Lowe's pin holder flat and realized in order to cut the business card holder, I would need the top to be flat as well, so I made that correction. This is the only template we will need, and it is for the business card slot. I have some birch plywood scraps I'm using, First, I cut two pieces a smidge larger than the business card itself. I want the cards to fit loosely in the holder. Then I measured the other sides, which this clip is full of errors, and drilled them so I could Craig screw them together. Just a quick PSA announcement that nobody told me. It, they don't, the cards don't go like this, they go like this. So it doesn't have to be this size. It actually needs to be like that size. Shoot. Alright, back to the drawing board. And so, I cut and drilled the Craig holes again. Ensure the boards are flat against each other, I just use my clamp, but the router will be riding along the top, so you will want a nice flat surface. I use my impact to get the screws close, and since I am screwing them into the same direction end grain, I finish them off by hand to prevent them from splitting out or cracking the plywood. Using some 3M tape, I lined up where I wanted to cut the slot and pressed it on top of my workpiece. I am using my 4th inch flush router bit. It is getting set to not a super deep diameter, a little bit into there. I am clamping it down into my vise just to hold it into place for me. I'm going to take small little passes and bites out of it until I reach a depth that I feel is perfect. And then again, with the router, I do use mask and uh, noise canceling because it's loud and she's proud. So uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Fingers crossed. Something I completely overlooked was that if you are routing out a cavity, especially a deep one like this, throw a drill bit into your drill press or your hand drill and get the depth close to your finish line. This will remove a good chunk of material and put less strain on your router and less stress on your bit. So far, it's perfect. So that is as deep as this smaller router bit could go. So now we are going to be stepping it up into a a little bit deeper, a little more scary router bits.
We have reached the point where this is very deep to be cutting with a hand router. So I can take this off and honestly the flat part of this top template is going to become our guide. After each pass, I bump the flush cut router down about an eighth inch to a quarter of an inch each time. Spray a little contact adhesive and align the cutout to its desired location. I trimmed off the extra whoopsie room for the bottom. What is this, error appreciation month or what? So, <laughs> I lined it up to my center piece, which is perfect. However, I can't cut this off because that's where the piece comes to the top. So, I'm going to have to just match this side to this side. So that way these little cutouts are the same size and also this this is going to have to get moved to over here because I need at least this much clearance. After a few more mistakes, we have our final cut line for the logo. You know what would be cool is if I had some freaking flip carts to have these tools already on them. I was impressed. My little bandsaw handled this block just fine. I was worried about chipping the card holder, but everything came out B-E-A-U-tifly. Then I sanded. And sanded. Switch sanders. Did a little even by hand. Alright, that was a lot more stressful than it probably needed to be. but. It is now complete. It's sanded, it's ready, it holds the business cards in there. I do only wanna put two holes in the top four pins. I'm gonna go minimalist on this one, make it a little more fancy. Um, and this one, I'm probably gonna just put eight holes in the top and then sand it when we're done. Again, I am not gonna go ahead and try to drill out such a huge cavity from this one so that it has a spot to actually like drop in pins and things. That's not gonna happen. So. This one is just going to get the two. This one is going to get eight. I'm going to experiment with a half inch Forstner bit in the drill press, mainly because it looks like Pilot G2s are the same diameter, Pilot G2 Limiteds, same diameter. And then the question of it is these Zebra pins. I know a lot of people use those. That's what I picked up to put into this. And I don't know. I don't know. So. Let's get a two by four in there. I'm gonna drill out a couple different size holes. We'll play with the pin sizes and we'll see what we come up with. If only I had a freaking flip cart, maybe one that's on wheels. Seriously, after this project, we have to make the flip carts. I'm tired, I'm tired of picking this up. As many of you may know, there's not much between a half inch and a three eighths. Only about an eighth of an inch. <laughs> so I have a half inch Forstner and I have a three eighths standard drill bit. The three eighths actually fits these guys very nicely. The half inch fits these loose. I don't want them to be loose and cockeyed in there. And they definitely don't fit this. That's yikes. So let's do the three eighths and we'll put the zebra pins into this guy. I set the depth using a pin as a reference point, and yes, I am a pin nerd. So these had to be perfect. The zebra pins are aesthetically pleasing and will complement the workpiece perfectly. I mark a few reference guides on the top of the bigger block. Again, I am going for a minimal approach, and the more holes you want to drill, the more likely it is that one of those holes will not be centered with the rest. All right, for the big block boy, I'm going to cut in a groove down here for a pin holder so that it lays this way. And then I'm going to have four spots for pins, markers, whatever. It's going to be the half inch hole. So I come in one and three eighths for my first ones and then three and one quarter this direction, three and one quarter this direction to get them evenly spaced. As for the lines themselves, 
five eighths in for the first and then one and three eighths for the second. And then this will be centered in probably one and five eighths. I'd like it to be a little more in front than these. I didn't want them to be perfectly in thirds. I wanted this to kind of stand out on its own, have a little bit more room since it's going to be a little wider. Then I began drilling the pinholes using the half inch Forstner bit. Life is full of ups and downs, and so is using a Forstner bit. Back in the vise, I have offset that line to three quarters of an inch, and then I have set up the palm router so that it has that guided fence, and then I can just put it on here. I'm going to go until these inside corners touch this. If I go to this spot on the outside, it's not quite big enough for a pin, so I'm going to go a little bit wider. Hope it all works out. This is supposed to be a relaxing hobby, but every cut and hole I drilled had me stressed out. Oh, look, more sanding. I threw some fire at my wood burner and stamped the bottom with my name. The larger pin holder was stamped on the front since it's our last name. This was originally scripted as a skit that I just sang a song and along the way we were building a project, but with YouTube copyright strikes, I was like, singing to a tiny dancer and I miss the way you'll make me feel and it's real and we watch the sunset over the castle on the hill. And that's how cool it could have been, but I didn't write the song. I get it. All right.